while everyone is on TikTok glazing LeBron's meat. You are my sunshine, my mesh up. Oh, God damn. Oh. While everyone is out there glazing LeBron, calling him a sunshine, doing all that stupid stuff. Jordan would never, by the way. Jordan and his fans, we would never disrespect Jordan like that because we're putting in him, we're putting, if we do that, doing that to him, that means we're putting him in like a weird baby kind of spotlight. See, all the LeBron glazers who are doing this trend on TikTok, you're really disrespecting him when you think about it because you're putting him in this sunshine that's meant to be a baby. The original thing is a baby there. And like, you are my sunshine. Yeah, like, because LeBron is a, like a baby. So, you know, maybe it does make sense why people are doing it. See, no one knows what they're talking about, bro. That's why we don't do it to Jordan. Because Jordan is the GOAT. We would never disrespect and do anything like that to the true king, Michael Jordan. I'm his number one meat rider. And there needs to be someone meat riding Jordan, bro. Because there's too many LeBron donuts out here, bro. And it's, it's making me angry. So, Jordan stands. Rise up. Rise up, guys. Comment down below. You know, help me out, bro. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. I'm back with another video. The loaded Lakers are making crybaby LeBron look bad. Again, we're reacting to Scap Attack. Because Scap Attack and I are the only ones, you know. That really call out this nonsense. Scap Attack really does his research as well. So props to him, man. We always watch his videos. I haven't posted in like four days. Because I've been addicted to Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh my god. What a good game, bro. What a good game. Dragon's Dogma 2, bro. I, sometimes I need to force myself to have a break. Or I'll just keep playing it for like the entire day. You know, is that good? It's like... You know what? It's like infused with Skyrim. It's like, it feels like Skyrim, but it's like a better version of Skyrim. It's, man, go go try Dragon's Dogma 2. Anyway, let's get into this video, man. Well, the Lakers beat the Grizzlies last night to extend their season-long win streak to five games now. LeBron James was predictably back in action last night against Memphis, one of the worst teams in the Western Conference this year. But he was again predictably unavailable just the night before since he was load managing his fake ankle injury for a 10th time this season. Sitting out the Lakers game against one of the best teams in the entire mm. NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks. And if LeBron did play in that box game, I'm not going to lie. I feel like they lose that game. Because... No one really talks about it, but LeBron, I don't think he makes his teammates that much better. He really does hinder them in a way, kind of like Luka, how Luka Doncic hinders his teammates. So yeah, LeBron plays that Milwaukee game. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Milwaukee wins that, you know. But if Jordan was in that situation, obviously, you know, he's winning. And the Bucks stormed out of the gate in that game, taking a 26 to 8 lead early in the first, on the way to a 32 16 advantage at the end of the first quarter. They were then up 16 points at halftime and had a big lead of 19 points with just under eight minutes to play in the fourth quarter. What? Yes, you did hear that correctly. The Bucks were up 94 to 75 with 7 minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the final period. In fact, the Lakers wouldn't even take their first lead in that game until halfway through the first overtime session. And while it would take a second overtime, eventually the Lakers outlasted the Milwaukee Bucks without LeBron for a second time this season. The Bucks, who are at this time the number two seed in the Eastern Conference and the team 
with the fourth best current title odds. The Lakers swept the season series against the Bucks behind Anthony Davis's transcendent performance, dropping 34 points, 23 rebounds, four blocks, and two steals in 52 minutes, including the massive block on Damian Lillard to send the game into a second overtime. Austin Reeves added 29 points in this one to go along with his 14 rebounds and 10 assists, including what amounted to the game-winning shot, while D'Angelo Russell added 29 points. Can I just say this? D'Lo really annoys me. I don't know why, but something about D'Lo, man, it's like he just annoys me. Like, bro, bro's just annoying to me. Like, why, why does he annoy me? Like, I'm trying to figure out why. Hmm, why does D'Lo annoy me? I don't know. He's just annoying. You know, like those people you just find annoying? I think he's one of those people I can't like. While the assists. The Lakers, meanwhile, moved to 6-4 and four now without... Uh, you know what? The whole Lakers squad is annoying, bro. The whole Lakers... Uh, screw the Lakers, bro. Why am I even reacting to their videos, bro? Scap Attack, what are we doing, bro? Why are we, why are we just making videos about like, the Lakers, bro? I guess it is to um, roast them and you know, show their corruption and all that. So I guess that's why. But the Lakers, no one likes the Lakers, man. I'm sorry. If you're a Laker fan, I'm sorry. But like, I just, mm, it's an ick, bro. You know when you get the ick from some girl, bro? That's what the Lakers is. They give me the ick. Like, they have like, so many red flags and stuff, bro. That's, that's what it is about the Lakers, man on this season in 10 games and are 4 and one in their last five without the self-proclaimed king, including a win over the Celtics in Boston. And Anthony Davis, who was the best player on the floor in the game against Milwaukee, by far, continues to prove his worth this season. In a game that featured Giannis Antetokounmpo, who has won two of the last five league MVPs, a Defensive Player of the Year, and has been named First Team All-NBA for the last five straight seasons, it was Davis who was the best player on the floor in either uniform. But that is just what kind of a player Anthony Davis is. And for a guy who has allegedly never had enough help in LeBron James, he has had Anthony Davis now for five seasons. Davis, who is 15th all-time in career box plus minus, above Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Tim Duncan. Yo. Davis. Yo, I put an alarm on. That's what that was, bro, because... I'm going to go to the gym in an hour with my mate. And yesterday morning, I actually woke up at 11 a.m. <laughs> That's bad. Don't wake up at 11 a.m. But yesterday I woke up, oh no, yeah, yesterday I woke up at 11 a.m. So I was like, oh, you know, i got to make sure I wake up today. But today I woke up because of a smoke alarm. So I'm I'm chilling who is fourth in NBA history in career player efficiency rating. Yeah, see, this isn't just a one season deal for AD. This was always the kind of ceiling and potential he has had since basically- The problem with AD is he's too inconsistent. Inconsistency is his downfall. He has games like that probably every maybe like 10 nights or something. Or 12 nights. Like it's just, it. and then maybe he'll put up like eight, 10 and one the next night, you know? Hitting the NBA. The one and only year LeBron won a title since arriving in LA, now six seasons ago, came in the 2019-2020 season when Anthony Davis was the Lakers' best player. A season where Davis was a top five league-wide player, being named first team All-NBA, first team defense, and finishing sixth in MVP voting and second in defensive player of the year voting. And in the bubble tournament on the Disney campus in Orlando, Florida, Davis would lead that postseason in total points and win shares. And now Davis has been playing at that level for major stretches this season while missing only four games. Meanwhile, D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves continue to excel this season. 
The Lakers also stole Spencer Dinwiddie 18 games ago when he cleared waivers, who was averaging 13 points per game for Brooklyn in 48 games this season. The reemergence of Rui Hachimura is underway as he had 16 points and 14 rebounds in the win over Milwaukee and led LA last night against the Grizzlies, dropping a season-high 32 points and 10 rebounds on 11 of 14 from the field. The Lakers are actually stacked and validating every bit of the preseason hype surrounding this team off of their Western Conference Finals run in last year's playoffs. A series where they held leads late in all four games against the eventual NBA champion Denver Nuggets. It shouldn't be a matter of praise for LeBron and company for going all the way from play and tournament to the conference finals a year ago. And it shouldn't be a question as to how they do it again this year, as the bracket is yet again shaping up favorably for them. The real issue should be why are the Lakers perpetually in the play-in tournament? Why hasn't LA been a perennial powerhouse since LeBron's arrival? These are similar questions that have been swirling around LeBron for virtually his entire career. How does a guy who is allegedly the greatest player ever, and at the very least, by most accounts, a top three all-time player, continually surround himself with elite perennial Jordan would never. Perennial All-Star and Hall of Fame caliber players, only to come up short year after year after year. Four championships in 21 seasons. Well, more like three and a half championships in <laughs> 21 seasons. Two of which <laughs> came with a top five positional player ever and a couple other Hall of Famers. His third came with another super team and his fourth with AD who was already named a top 75 player ever when that team was unveiled in 2021 and Davis was just 28 years of age. It was just a few weeks ago, crybaby LeBron was whining about how bad the Lakers were. And then on any given night, we get our ass kicked by any team in NBA. I mean, we just suck right now. But they've now- Jordan would never, ever, ever say that he, he suck right now. Like, what kind of mentality is that LeBron? Like, this is why another reason LeBron will never be the GOAT on seven of their last nine and are surging into the playoffs for a second season in a row. So when the Lakers go on yet another deep run in the playoffs yet again this season, we shouldn't be praising LeBron. We should be questioning why he hasn't been able to get all the way to the ultimate goal more often, both with Anthony Davis and for the entirety of his overrated career, which will continue to be highlighted by many more failures than success. Well, the Lakers. This thing, bro. The Lakers are stacked, like Scap Attack said. But the inconsistency is what's going to get them. But at the same time, I don't want my OKC Thunder playing them because we match up really, really badly with the Lakers. I'll admit that. We have no size against Davis. Like, he would dominate us. So I'm just praying that we don't play the Lakers in the first round. Let me check the standings real quick. Let's check the standings. See now we we dropped to third in the West. Okay, see so dropped to third in the West. We might end up being the third seed. Oh, hey, you know what? That means we have a chance of either playing the Mavs, the Suns, or the Kings because they're all, or even the Pelicans. They're all in play for the sixth seed. Mm, even the Clippers, if they drop, Clippers, Pelicans, Mavs, Suns, Kings. You know what? I wouldn't mind playing any of those teams as an OKC fan, bro. I reckon we can get the job done, as long as it's not against the Lakers. Anyway, thanks guys for watching this video. Um, uh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. 
un video, mami, para perder tiempo, empecemos, ¿qué quiere que